you have logged in to the online session by the Goethe Centrum Hyderabad and with Professor Dr. Ganeshan on the subject, the challenges of cross-cultural communications and interaction between India, Indians and Germans. Goethe Centrum Hyderabad, many of us uh, are aware of, you're aware of that we have the mandate to teach the German language and promote German culture. We have with us today, <laughs> Professor Garnation. <laughs> I Dr. Vridagiri Ganeshan is an emeritus professor of German and former vice chancellor of the Central Institute of English and Foreign Languages, erstwhile known as CIEFL, C I E F L, and now known as the English and Foreign Language University. Professor Ganeshan was in Hyderabad with CIEFL between 1975 and 2007, at which point in time he went to the United States of America and has been teaching German and Hindi at Emory University, Georgia State University, Georgia Tech, and Goethe Centrum in Atlanta in the US. He has studied Hindi literature, history and political science at Osmania University, and later went on to do his Germanistic and Internationale Politik, the international politics at the University of Munich between 1967 and 75, when he obtained his doctorate. Dr. Ganeshan is a recipient of the fellowship from DAAD, German mm -hmm. Academic Exchange Service, the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung, the uh, Humboldt Fellowship and with Humboldt, he was at the University of Munich between 1987 and 88, and yet again between 94 and 95. His specializations are German studies, method of teaching German as a foreign language, and cross-cultural communications. He's the author of two books, The Indian Erlebnis, The Indian Experience of Hermann Hesse, uh, which came out in 1972, and the India image, the image of India in German uh, um, uh, writings in 1975. I am extremely happy that we have with us Dr. Ganeshan. And, um, you know, this is a very fun subject. Uh, of course, it's also a very serious subject. The reason it is fun is that as we learn about cross-cultural communications, there can be four paths which can be very, very funny, but it can also be extremely serious in nature and hopefully something in between as well. You know, there are many things that uh, Professor Garishan is going to bring up, but I do recall the very obvious ones that some of you may have experienced or some of us may now feel extremely bad about, but earlier in the Indian context, uh, this mean, meant nothing at all. So if, if guests came over and brought a bouquet of flower, a man would never give it to the woman because the lady of the house is a woman. And therefore he would hand it over to the man, which would be a, an experience of complete shock uh, to the Germans because you have to give the gift that you bring, particularly flowers to the lady of the, of the house. And um, these things can really, really be very funny. Uh, or the German uh, guests who sometimes don't know whether they should do namaste, put their hands out or what to do. And these are kind of awkward, um, messages, statements of culture, um, and largely we can laugh about it, but sometimes we cannot. And hence, I look forward to um, um, really enjoying this session with Professor Ganeshan. Over to you, sir. The, just you. one 
one minute, Professor Ganeshan, let me just give the format. This is a, a session where a professor will speak for about an hour. You are most welcome to write your questions in the chat box. Uh, myself and my colleague uh, Jyoti Vizwara will be uh, monitoring these questions and on your behalf, we will raise them to him at the end of his speech. Um, and now definitively over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening to all of you. The challenges of cross-cultural communication and interaction between Indians and Germans. That's a topic for today. Let me start first by thanking the entire team of Goethe Centrum, Amitaji, Padmaji, Jyotiji and Paulji for taking the risk of inviting me today to talk to you all. I also thank you all in advance for the risk you have taken to come here to listen to me. Culture, any culture, manifests itself in three things. One is ideas, second one is behavior patterns, and then the products. Any culture which you come to know, you will see that this culture has got certain ideas which are very unique. And the people in this culture have certain behavior patterns which may be different from your own. And this culture also brings out certain cultural products. So what happens is, whereas the behavior patterns and ideas, they can be observed. Sometimes you can even ask questions. By asking questions, we can find out the reasons for a particular behavior or the explanation for an idea. But the ideas actually, which are underlying in a culture, uh, you cannot understand them immediately. See the products, you can go to a souvenir shop, buy the product, take it home, put it in your cupboard and be happy. So whenever you don't understand an idea behind the behavior pattern of the persons in that culture, we will have to first accept that culture as a system in which members of that culture organize and interpret the world around them according to their own circumstances and needs and therefore also behave in a particular way, talk in a particular way and interact with other people in a particular way. Now, first of all, we should try to understand what is cross-cultural communication. First, let us look at a communication within a language group of culture. When two people meet each other, or it can be several people, they have to understand one thing, the language always conditions the culture, the culture conditions the language. So, when two people, let's say so-called native speakers, of the same language, from the same social group, they communicate with each other, their successful communication is facilitated by three factors. Number one is a common language. They speak a common language. Number two, they have a shared knowledge of the rules of the language and its proper usage. This is very, very important. Number three, there is a taken for granted meanings and connotations of every word they're using and every phrase they're using. This is very, very important. If you are not part of that language family, then you will have problems understanding what they are trying to tell you. Because they understand it, they have a common background, common language, so they will be able to do it. But you cannot do it. Now I'll give you some examples. The first day I landed in the US, what happened to me was, an American asked me, hey, what's up? I just looked at him, that was my first day in the US, and you know, my English is more Indian English and a little bit of British English to show off. But American English is not my stuff, not even today. The American English makes a lot of problems for me. I don't have problems with American English. So when the guy said, hey, what's up? I just looked at him. I said, what kind of an idiot is? Why is he asking me? So I said, excuse me? He said, hey, what's up? I smiled at him and said, sky, look up and you can see it yourself. The fellow was so shocked. He said, oh, you are new to the US? I said, no, 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 US is new to me. Let me give you an example in several of our languages. Tamil, 
if you are crossing the road in chennai on a busy street there's a lorry coming a truck and that fellow is unhappy with you he will shout at you and tell you enna pa veetla solittu vantiya this only tamil people will understand i'm not going to explain that you ask your tamil friends in telugu if somebody tells about a person aina pedda kumbakonam this tamilians will not understand because kumbakonam means something entirely different to them like pramadam in telugu is an accident whereas pramadam in tamil means excellent wonderful malayalam if two malayalis are talking and one malayali is talking about a big problem and he uses the phrase nayar pudicha puliwal now if you are a non malayali speaker you won't understand what it is in marathi in mumbai there are two marathi fellows standing there talking to each other suddenly the one fellow tells the other one are they 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 pandu ara if you are not a maharashtrian particularly in mumbai you won't understand what pandu means you may connect it with mahabharat that's wrong in hindi sometimes when you are very upset with a person the hindi speaker suddenly blurts out sala kahin ka now you can't put that in english as brother in law of somewhere doesn't make sense what is important is also there are common speech acts when people from same culture talk to each other and they behave accordingly common speech acts means for every situation there is a script fixed and you normally use that script like in telugu you say kshemanga hoy labanga randi now you cannot do it in any other language because that's a script written for that situation in telugu i'll give you two examples one of your friend is getting married you go there you want to wish him all the best normally in the european culture german french anybody american they would go shake hands with the fellow smile at him and tell him some standard phrase wish you a very happy married life i wish you all the best great that you are getting married today these are standard things but in india we don't do that very often we use english and we use indian english and sometimes we use our own languages but in our languages there are phrases hardik shubhakamna we don't do all that we will go stand in front of that fellow and since i am assuming most of you are from hyderabad also you understand hindi and hyderabadi hindi we will look at that guy and then you know what we will say are doing same mistake this means in the indian context i have done the mistake of marrying you are also doing the same mistake but don't worry as a friend i am there for you so all this means best wishes for a happy married life another example visiting somebody in the hospital europe america when somebody falls ill he needs a surgery he is taken to hospital let's say if in germany somebody informs him mr muller has been operated he is in the hospital the german style german way of doing this speech act the situation is you say wish him all the best convey my greetings to him that's all you don't rush to the hospital one day family will call and tell you friday 3 to 4 you can visit him. you go to the hospital enter his room stand there smile at him and wish him all the best be there for about 5 minutes then you get out of the hospital go away you know the indian speech act is not like that india is yes, gupta ji ka operation ho gaya apollo mein news aate hi every fellow has to run to the apollo hospital wait outside in i see when he is brought to the room there are 100 fellows waiting for him and he has to look at all the 100 fellows and all the hundred fellows will ask the same question again and again what happened and gupta ji has to tell every fellow the full story he has said oh i was coming down the stairs i slipped fell down called my wife she didn't listen she was watching tv fortunately i was something he called the... you know the whole story the man has no energy he is going to he will die but this is indian culture indian way of socializing so tomorrow if i am in the hospital in india you are all going to come and visit me you know what i am going to do i am going to record my entire story keep it ready when you come ask me kya hua ye maindi enna che i will smile at you and say first listen to this tape then we'll talk now what is cross cultural communication cross cultural communication is communication between two persons from different cultures whatever language they may use it can be a german and an indian both speaking german it can be a german and indian both speaking english it can be a german and indian 
maybe indian doesn't know german german doesn't know you know the indian languages they may even speak in french whatever it is so two people from different cultures trying to communicate with each other that is called cross cultural communication now there are hundreds of books on cross cultural communication you need not to take the trouble of reading all those books because many of those books give you very very scholarly theories written by professors of cross cultural communication professors of communication and all forget those books they are not going to help you because you know many of the professors who teach communication they themselves cannot communicate so what we need is a practical approach to the problem and that's what i'm trying to do today i'm very much down to earth pragmatic and i'll point out to you the practical problems in a cross cultural communication and why does it happen now you know every cross cultural communication there are going to be cultural shocks there are going to be misunderstandings this happens because of four things four aspects number 1 there are different cultural assumptions between both the cultures and the languages for example take the example family what is family in india family is a very very big extended thing starting from joint family to extended family very much extended family up to that famous saying which we all proudly say vasudaiva kutumbakam the entire world is my family because the entire world is my form family indians have no problems interfering in the life of everybody around them we keep on giving free advice we interfere in everybody's business and just ko hindi mein bolte hain hamesha beech mein taang marna is what we keep on doing whereas the european american concept of family is not that big it's nuclear so if you say what is your family in german or in america the standard answer would be it's only he she and his children their own parents don't belong to their family a family is always husband wife the children he she children but even that definition has to be modified today because the actual definition would be a family in the us for example or even in germany at times it is he she his children her children and their children think about it take the role of a man and woman in a society every society has a different concept about cultural assumption and i will talk about it a little more later on the next second aspect is different ways of structuring messages you are in another culture you want to say something your feelings your thoughts you want to express how do you do that very often you do it going by your own cultural context your own cultural rules this may not be fine in that culture simple example would be for that i always ask students what is guten morgen in indian languages they i get answers suprabhat suprabhatam you know and things like that kale vanakkam all this is wrong and stupid because this is way this is the way most of german teachers teach you they tell you good and morgen is good morning so it is suprabha it is not it depends on the cultural connotation good and morgen germans tell everybody in the morning english also you say it even in india, india you get up you tell some 10 20 people good morning good morning good morning so how many people do you say in the morning suprabha 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 you don't say it. so the correct way of saying good and morgen in indian context is namaste vanakkam i'll give you one concrete example about structuring messages expressing it structuring messages for people in a foreign country there's a restaurant four foreigners go there and they order a steak and salad they all go individually they are not together the steak is absolutely not good salad is great now how do they complain a german will call the waiter tell him clearly this steak is not okay something is not okay with it take it back get me another steak you will not say anything about the salad the american will complain in a different way he will call the waiter and say hey buddy you know what this steak well it could have been a little better you see this is not what i was expecting so would you mind taking it back to the kitchen and see what you can do about it 
by saying that the American feels he has been very blunt and frank and he has criticized. But the American is not German. So he has to do 50% now, something very polite. Americans always blow hot, blow cold. So he is, he is clear in his criticism, but now he will add something very nice and polite. But he will say, oh, you know, but the salad is great. The salad is great, you know. It's wonderful salad. That's his way of complaining. What will a Japanese do? A Japanese, being East Asian, he will not directly complain. So what he will do is he will call the waiter and tell the waiter, this salad is very, very good. Very good salad. Excellent salad. But he will not say anything about the steak. That means in his culture, the steak is not okay. And what will our Indian friend do? He will want to complain, but he will not complain. He won't call the waiter. He will chuk chop, eat the stack, steak, curse himself, Mary Bad Kismati. He will come out and tell 100 people outside, Are yaar, over restaurant mein aise faltu steak milta hai, mat jana. Third aspect, different ways of speaking. How do you speak? You have a problem you want to talk about. I'll give you one example. Because of the time I'm giving you one example, I've got hundreds of examples for everything. So when we meet personally, we can talk about it. I'll give you lots and lots of examples. Only condition is I'll bring you the examples and you bring me the bottle of whiskey. A German colleague in Goethe Center in Atlanta, she was new, she asked me, the nation, what is the different ways the Americans and Germans express themselves? How do they talk? I told her, look, I'll tell you an example. My conversation was half in German, half in you know, English to her, but I'm telling you in English. I told her, Let's take a German, let's take an American. Both are the same problem, constipation. They want to come and discuss that with me. They will walk into my room. The German will walk in with a stiff, serious face. And you can see that he has a problem. A big problem he has got. So, what do we do? The German will come and tell me, Hey, Ganeshan, you know what? I have a big problem. It's it's a big problem. You know, I'm suffering. It's so you know, all his body language tell you how serious the problem is that he's suffering. And you know, I tried tablets, I took a lot of liquid. My God, I go and sit there, try my best, you no, know, nothing comes out. I don't know how long this is going to be. You listen to it. Oh, he has a problem. You can see he's suffering. He has pain. First, you have some sympathy for him. Sympathy slowly turns into empathy. And at the end, actually you are very, very happy telling yourself, hey, look, he has this big problem. Fortunately, I don't have it. When American walks into your room, you won't see anything on the face. American face is always smiling, even in a crisis. So the American will walk into the room and say, hey, buddy, hey, Ganeshan, you know what? There's something exciting happening, man. I must talk to you about that. You know, I have this problem since seven days. I just don't know how I got it. You know, my God, it's terrific. And you know, I, it's, it's, it's a little painful, of course. But you see, I drank tablets. I drank a lot of liquids. Oh God, I did everything. I did some physical exercises. I go and sit there. I try and try and try. Oh God, you know what? I sit and try and try. My God, oh shit, nothing comes out. Ha, ha, ha. You think this fellow doesn't need any sympathy. He has a problem, but he seems to be enjoying it. So no empathy for him. At the end, you actually feel jealous. You say, my God, look, he's having a problem, he's enjoying it. Why is it? I don't have it. The last aspect is the fourth one is different ways of interacting. How do you interact with people when you have to discuss problems? When you have to discuss issues, you have to solve your conflict. I'll give you one example. When there is a conflict between two Germans, what they will do is, first they will accept that there is a conflict, there is a problem. They will not run away from it. Then they will say, we have to find a solution. And then they will look at each other, contact each other and say, hey look, we have a problem, both of us, why don't you sit down and talk about it? They will sit, have a very frank talk and try to come at some kind of solution. That is why in German, there is a Phrase called, we are missing unter vier Augen reden. We have to talk under four eyes. 
you and I. We don't need a third person. Germans don't take a third person into confidence. They don't need it. What is the Indian way of doing? Indian way of doing is any conflict, suppose you and I, we have a problem. First thing we do is we stop talking. Second thing we do is if I see you coming in the corridor from that side, I will go away this side. After some time, we do realize the problem has to be solved. So what do we do? We'll always call a third person, a mediator. And that person has to be older to both of us. And he will listen to both of us and he will give us a solution to the problem and both of us will try our best to accept it. So a German came to India. He had heard about the Indian way of solving conflicts. Came to Mumbai. First evening, he went on the road. Suddenly there was a big crowd. He peeped in and said, what's happening? A and B, they were fighting. So A and B were fighting and there were 200 people around them. You know, in India you get crowds very, you know, without any problems. So the German was watching. A and B fought for some time. Then they looked at the crowd, picked up an old man. But then they said, Uncle Abai. Then they said, Dekhe, amara ek problem hai, aap amari madad kiji. So the uncle said, Acha, tell me. He told him his story. Then uncle said, Oh, oh, you are right, you are right. Yeah, 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 you are right. We got very upset. Uncle Ji, aap meri baat sunye. How can you say he is right? You have not listened to me. Uncle said, he, You tell me. We started telling his story. The uncle smiled and smiled and said, Oh, yeah, yeah, you are right. Yes, you are right. The German got totally confused. He said, if A is right, B is wrong. If B is right, A is wrong. That is a German logic. It is not Indian logic. If A is right, B is wrong. B is right, A is wrong. If both are right, there is no problem. What are they fighting about? So he went to the old Indian and said, Excuse me, I am a German. I am for the first time here. Can I ask you a question? The old man said, Yes. He said, A and B are fighting. Yes. You told A, he is right. Yes. But then B was not happy. Yes. You will hurt his story. Yes. Then you said, you are right. Yes. Sir, how can you say A is right and B is also right? If A is right, B is wrong. B is right, A is wrong. Only one of them can be right. Other one has to be wrong. If both are right, there is no problem. So what you did was not correct. No. The old man smiled at the German and said, you are also right. Cross-cultural interaction between Indians and Germans. Now that we understood generally what a cross-cultural communication is, why problems come up, I'm going to give you certain examples where the way Indians think and Germans think differ, the way Indians react, Germans react differs, and that's why we have to keep in mind whenever we as Indians get into a cultural interaction with a German. Every one of us is a product of our own culture, whether we want it or not. Since cultures differ from each other, we all have a unique way of thinking, acting and behaving. In any encounter between an Indian and a German, there are going to be, you cannot avoid it, there are going to be definitely problems. This is what we call in Andhra English, compulsory, there will be problems. There are going to be problems because of the differences in attitudes, differences in cultural assumptions, different ways of structuring messages and different ways of speaking and therefore logical differences in one's own behavior as well as one's behavior towards the other person which also can become from a logical approach to your emotional approach. This can lead to both the people, it can create cultural shocks for both the people, it can create misunderstandings between both of them in their mutual communication. Now let us look at randomly into some of the differences which play an important role in the intercultural communication between Indians and Germans. Indians and Germans have different ways of interacting in conversations. Germans tend to practice what is called a reciprocal conversation. This is something like that old Hindi song, Ek sawal mai karo, ek sawal tum karo, sawal ka sawali jawab, aur kuch nahi. So it's a reciprocal conversation where Questions are asked directly and questions are answered directly and if at all any comments are made, they are made in a logical sequence. Indians prefer a non-reciprocal discourse, which means they neither ask direct questions nor like giving direct answers. So what happens is, I'll give you one example. If a German wants money from the other German, he wants a loan, he will tell the German straight away, hey, 
consume your 500 euro given the streets you next work at zero can you give me 500 euro you will get it next week the other shaman either will give him the money say yeah varum ne we are going to find it why not you are friends or you say nay shoot me a light if i have can get you say sorry i myself don't have money the indian way of doing it is indirect your friend will come to you he wants money from you but he won't ask you directly <clears throat> so it will be all a philosophical kind of conversation the friend will say are yaar मोटरसाइकिल खरीदना है अभी दस हजार रुपया एडवांस देना है पांच हजार तो है मेरे पास बाकी पांच हजार मालूम नहीं क्या करना है तो बेसिकली स्टडी यो आई टू बाय मोटर बाइक आई टू पे टेन थाउजेंड एडवांस आई फाइव थाउजेंड आई डोंट नो व्हाट टू डू आई नीड अनदर फाइव थाउजेंड इन थ्री डेज नो आई एम थिंकिंग आई डोंट नो वॉट टू डू आई रियली डोंट नो बट आई रियली नीड फाइव थाउजेंड ही इज नॉट टेलिंग यू वॉन्ट इट फ्रॉम यू एंड वॉट विल यू डू यू नो दैट ही वॉन्ट्स मनी यू नॉट टेल इट अरे आफ्टर वी आर फ्रेंड्स ऑफ कोर्स आई गिव यू और यू से अरे क्या एज वी से इन हैदराबाद पागल कुत्ता काटा क्या मेरे पास आके पैसे पूछ रहा वर यू बिटन बाय अ मैड डॉग व्हाई डिड यू कम एंड आस्क व्हाई आर यू आस्किंग मी फॉर मनी नो नो यू विल गिव अ फिलोसॉफिकल अरे यू नो व्हाट आई एम पुटिंग इट इन इंग्लिश यू कैन से इट नाइसली इन इंडियन लैंग्वेजेस अरे व्हाट नाउ इट इज हु डजंट हैव प्रॉब्लम एवरीबॉडी हैज प्रॉब्लम एंड यू नो पर्टिकुलरली सिंस डीमोनेटाइजेशन एवरीबॉडी हैज प्रॉब्लम्स विद मनी you directly telling him get lost i am not going to give you the money so whenever what happens is when germans comes to india they feel quite irritated because they don't get very often direct answers to their questions whenever there is a problem the indian counterpart reacts in a cool manner and says well where is the problem there is no problem see german standing at the airport he is on waiting list he wants to know am i going to be accommodated on this flight or not the airlines fellow says what sir we are all on waiting list and then he will say sir what is the problem there is no problem so when an indian says there is no problem that means there is a big problem which he does not want to deal with when the german says that he will do something or promises something he will always do it it will be followed by action you can depend on that if what has been promised cannot be done the german will offer an apology followed by an explanation indians tend to promise most of the time things they will never do but they promise the indian culture it's not important to keep up promises so the government also keeps on promising hundreds of things but the country has reached such a stage now that the people don't take these promises seriously i'm sure all of you are waiting for that promise 12 lakh rupees in your account as i am also doing whenever the world bank offers a loan to india the world bank expects that india will pay it back sometime whereas honestly from indian point of view loans are always taken not to be repaid indians are bound by a group identity in their thoughts and actions the group to which the indian belongs to determines the identity of an indian every indian belongs to a family a village a town a language group a religious community a social group a professional group so on and so forth <clears throat> germans attach a lot of value to their individual identity look at the way germans introduce themselves and also others a german will if he is introducing me he will tell you das is herr professor dr ganesh this is professor dr ganesh there das is frau müller this is mrs miller now look at the way i'm talking about the majority millions and millions of indians i'm not bothered about the anglicized european indians who are neither here nor there i'm talking about the traditional indians in indian languages how do they introduce inse miliye ye subramaniam ke bete hain inse miliye she is the niece of gupta ji so you have no identity you are always connected to your group and the group identity you used to introduce you or somebody in your family who is elder to you who is more important to you whereas germans don't do it an indian feels like an indian only when he is outside the country inside india we are never indians the village identity you come out from your village go to another village i am from this village from a cluster of villages you go to a small town then i am from these villages 
from a small town you go to a bigger town you are from this town from a bigger town you go to the head capital city of the state you are from this district from capital city you move to another state then i am from telangana i am from andhra i am from tamil nadu i am from kerala you go from south to north i am a south indian he is a north indian only when you leave india you are in india but unfortunately even outside abroad indians are never indians you go and see what's happening there bengali association punjabi association telangana association atlanta tamil christian association atlanta tamil tamilian association when are we going to be indians that's a big question for us group is important group orientation is important in india because you are controlled by the group and if you depart if you ignore the group norms it will lead to feelings of shame and guilt loss of identity they will even excommunicate you from the group indian social system offers different kinds of families which are close knit and which individuals are tightly interdependent that's why you introduce your neighbor also and he is my neighbor but he is also our family you travel in train from let's say secunderabad up to kazipet the fellow sitting next to you becomes a member of your family and we are always afraid of the group because we are always asking what will people say particularly the, you know this idiom in india what will four people say char logo kya bolenge naal per enna solvanga naal ger em jetta now do you know who these four people are ask your parents ask your grandparents i'm sure they will not know it because in india they expect the younger people to follow things what elders are doing but without doing explanation i'll tell you who these four people are i done a lot of research in these things in the village life earlier if you didn't follow the village norm they excommunicated you you were kicked out of the village life you were sitting alone the day you die to you lift your dead body take you to the shmasan funeral ground four people are required and nobody will come because you have been excommunicated these are the four people we are afraid of even today today you should not do it because today ambulance will come and take you straight away to the funeral ground crematorium on the contrary if you look at the germans germans have an absolutely individual identity that's more important for them they also have sometimes group identity but not they have a big group identity when they are watching a football match but otherwise it's all individuals german children are trained since very early in their lives to consider themselves in spite of group identities available to them as individuals responsible for their own decisions and actions they get enough opportunities in life to make their own choices and decisions now what happens is because of the different kinds of identities indians and germans have indians tend to think that germans are self centered they are egoistic they are assertive they are aggressive they don't care for the group they don't care for the feeling of other people whereas germans consider indians because they are never independent they consider indians to be you know group members over polite weak indecisive and overtly dependent on others the most difficult question an indian faces when he's all alone in germany when he gets up in the morning whether it's all at a restaurant or in a german family what happens is he is always asked questions where i take decisions but there are no elders to advise him the first question is in the morning cafe or a tea nobody asks you what would you like to was make things it drink no even say was make things it drink comes cafe or a tea then you say okay cafe you think it's problem stuff no milk sugar or own it sugar milk milk own milk and the indian gets very upset a japanese colleague told me whenever he is in germany with all these kind of german questions demanding decisions he feels intellectually raped in india interaction between people is determined by a continual shift from low to high status and vice versa depending on with whom one is interacting in most of the situation in india the equation that is accepted without any question even highly educated circles is age is equal to wisdom the more gray hair you have the more respect you get that's why i don't dye my hair i have james bond principle live and let die i live and let others dye their hair the elder one knows always everything better because he has experienced the world for a longer time the higher one in the hierarchy knows everything better because he has more experience than you in germany people don't believe in this 
In Germany, people believe that everyone has his own life experience, one year or 20 years, and each one deserves some basic level of respectful treatment. Therefore, age is not equal to wisdom. Higher position doesn't always mean that you're a better person. You need more respect. No. That's why the director of a company and the driver of a company in Germany, they can sit at the same table in the canteen and eat. You know, this is not possible in India. Distinction of status acknowledged in Germany is done in subtle ways. The tone of voice, order of speaking, choice of words, that will roughly tell you what is your position in the hierarchy. But you don't meet them explicitly. Whereas in India, everyone who has a power and position will try to display it, you know, wherever he goes. One big question I have always is, why does the IAS officer need some other small fellow a pune to carry his back? He's not the IAS officer carrying a big responsibility for the Indian society. If he's carrying that responsibility, can't he also carry his own back? That's a big question. Whereas Indians feel quite impressed and thrilled that they are treated like normal human beings in Germany, not every Indian understands and takes cognizance of the subtleties in what is called, you know, uh, Auslander discrimination in Germany, but that's not a big problem, maybe. Germans enjoy the way Indians treat them as gods in India. Indians still have the colonial style, colonial inferiority complex, even highly educated people, and they have a great reverence for anybody with a white skin who comes from Europe or America. Indian holds in high positions in India are no exception to this issue. Indians don't distinguish between personal and professional life, that is, between home and office. Private life and public life overlap with each other in India. In the office, one can talk about one's home, and at home, it's quite normal to discuss problems of office. An Indian has lots of friends at his place of work, with the result that when one gets married or is getting one's children married off, one is expected to invite everybody in his office to this marriage. In case of a death also in the family, it's normal that every friend from your office will make a condolence visit and attend the funeral. In Germany, the professional life is strictly separated from personal life. Schnapps is schnapps and Geschäft is Geschäft. In office, one doesn't talk about one's personal problems and one in office, one has colleagues, one, one can work with somebody for 20 years, that person is still not your friend. Colleagues from office need not be invited to family functions. This is very, very important. Professional relationships have nothing to do with personal, personal relationships in Germany. Because of these differences, Indians tend to find Germans as co-workers quite reserved in their interaction at office. And the Germans feel that Indians try to be too familiar also at the workplace and also in business transactions. Germans believe in face-to-face -face interaction. Indians don't. Conflicts or disagreements in Germany are settled by, you know, forthright discussions among people involved. I give you that example, Uta Fear Organ and Uta Sex Organ. That has an international political implication. They know that in India, when you want to solve a conflict between two people, you need a third person. That's why they constantly tell you, oh, Pakistan, India problem, we will come and help you. Oh, Pakistan, India, China problem, we will come and help. But you tell them, tell the Americans, oh, you have a problem with Cuba, we will come and help you. They'll say it's none of your business. Indians prefer to take help from intermediaries for anything and everything, not only conflict, any small problem. You won't apply for leave, you won't go and ask your boss directly. You'll tell your friend, if I ask him, it won't look nice. In any case, he will say no to me. Why don't you go and ask? Remember in your school days, when you had to go for a school picnic, you needed 500 rupees. Did you ever go to your father straight away and ask him for money? No. You went to your mother and you told your mother to talk to your father about the problem and get you the 500 rupees. That the mother was able to do it and how she did it, uh, that's a great secret. Let us not discuss that. Germans tend to be frank, open and direct in their dealings with others and most of the time, quite assertive. They sound assertive. They are assertive. Sometimes they sound aggressive also. 
they state explicitly what they expect and they want from others. They don't mask their emotional responses. They convey their reactions as far as possible directly. And therefore, a German sounds to be always very assertive and aggressive. And that's why in Germany, high blood pressure is not considered as a disease. Low blood pressure is a disease. In England, the Englishman being a gentleman, low blood pressure is not a disease. High blood pressure is a disease. Compared to this, Indians don't like to be frank, open and direct in expressing their feelings and opinions. Their aim is not to hurt the feelings of others. They are also less inclined to contradict the other people who are above them in the hierarchy at, and also at home, as well as at the place of work. That's why you see the Indian Bahu, she will never contradict the, you know, her mother-in-law at home, even though she'll be cursing her inside. Indians are good at masking their emotions and can control their non-verbal gestures whenever and wherever they want. Indians will not come to the topic of discussion directly. They'll try to build up a friendly atmosphere first. <coughs> Sorry. Before they express their wish or their inability to do something. Indians are also prepared to adjust all the time. Life is adjustment. Anything, everything in India is adjustment. adjust This kind of flexibility makes one's life in India maybe less problematic sometimes, but this is something the German will never do. If you ask a German on aircraft, do you mind exchanging seats with me? He will bluntly tell you nine. In India, you don't know how to say no. I'm one of those Indians who can say that. That is because of my German training. Since Germans believe in directness and assertiveness, and Indians in circumspection and adjustability, Germans coming to India become quite confused when they start interacting with the Indians, whereas Indians who go to Germany feel that Germans lack politeness and friendliness and can only, you know, <clears throat> they can only tell frankly what they want. They are not bothered about the feelings of the partner in the conversation. Indians behave well at home, but not at public places. That is not our quality at all. That you are seeing now with Corona. You cannot teach 1 billion people in a couple of weeks public discipline. It's impossible. Germans behave in a well-disciplined manner, particularly at public places. Germans will line up, wait in the queue, wait for them in public places, and believe in the dictum, first come, first serve. Indians don't believe in this. Indians don't practice this. In India, might is right. Might also means whether you know the right kind of people. If you know the right kind of people at the right places, your job will be done quickly with a positive approach. The more people you know in India who have power and position, the easier is your life because your job will get done and you will not be affected by corruption. You see, in India, when there's a gathering, suddenly one foreigner walks in, particularly white skin. You won't do it with Africans. We have our racial discrimination also. Everybody will get excited. Sir, 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 go, go, go. You will let him go to the front. You go to Germany, you think any German and admires your nice brown skin without fair and lovely cream, he's going to let you through? No. Now, look at the difference between Germany and India is when it comes in Germany, you have to pay someone something so that he does something which he is not supposed to do. Whereas in India, you have to pay so that he does what he is, in any case, supposed to do. That's why Germans have a lot of problems with the Indian bureaucracy because they don't understand the concept of corruption. Indians have scant respect for the feelings and convenience of others while being in public places. Ask yourself, you are on an Indian train, night journey. What do your fellow passengers do? Do they all go to sleep at 9 or 10? No. They will continue their conversation late into midnight. They'll be playing cards. They'll be playing music. They'll be doing bhajans. Sometimes switch the lights on and off as and when they want it. But no one is supposed to complain about it. Noise pollution in India is something which shocks the Germans. But Indians tolerate it without problems. Blocking the view when someone is trying to watch a public event. Not asking for permit smokes. Blocking the traffic just like that. Not giving priority to those who are moving in a crowd by moving to the side. Parking vehicles in an unorderly manner or things done by most of the Indians without any consideration to others. Two years ago, I was standing at the central station in Madras waiting for the platform to be announced. There was a big crowd. 
They announced the platform number eight for Chennai Hyderabad Express. I had to move through the crowd. For three minutes, I was doing something, and then I realized what I was doing was stupid because I live in the U.S. My habits have changed. So I went on telling for the next three minutes, I want to go through the crowd. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Everybody was staring at me. Nobody was moving. And then I became totally a deshi Indian. I said, "Yo, Navriya, hard job." Everybody moved, and I walked. Germans find Indians to be very chaotic. That's why they think public life in India is chaotic. There's no discipline, and Indian finds Germans are blindly law-abiding, over-disciplined, and emotionally dry in public life. At midnight in Germany, if there's Germans standing at your traffic light, there's no cars coming. Nothing. The traffic light says red. Most of the Germans, at least the older generation, they will still wait for the green light to come. Germans follow all the laws. Every law they will follow. India, you know, you don't follow any laws at all. The only law all Indians are afraid of that is mother-in-law. For Germans, time is a resource like water, money. Sight is guilt. They say in German, time can be used well or poorly. Therefore. Germans tend to keep track of time in an obsessive manner. A well-organized person is, in the German eyes, a person whose specific time schedule is punctual and doesn't waste others' time, and is therefore reliable. In Germany, time can be saved, spent, lost, and therefore is calculated not only really in terms of years, seasons, months. Days of a second. Look at the Olympic records. Germans talk a lot about the past to measure how far they are in the present now, and look at the present as a decisive factor to plan about the future. In India, time is a constantly flowing phenomenon. It can be adjusted, exchanged, and if necessary, discarded. Time schedule is not the most important thing in one's life. One's priorities and programs can be constantly changed and readjusted. Punctuality is absolutely not the strength of Indians, except at the time of marriage, where the Mangal Sutra has to be tied exactly at the auspicious time. Otherwise, you are going to be in trouble. In India, the more important you are, the late you arrive. The so-called VIP, very important person. The more important you are, the late you arrive at a public meeting or function. You are not a VIP in my. If you ask me, a VIP is not a very important person. A very irritating person because he is wasting the time of other people. One excuse the Indians give for not being punctual is that the infrastructure in the country is such nothing can be done on time. Nowadays, you ask any Indian who comes late, "Are you sure there was a traffic?" There was absolutely no traffic. Doesn't matter. The same Indians have no problems in changing their time concept and habits once they are abroad in some other country where time is considered money. Indians can always adjust. Also, when they are abroad, abroad, they adjust abroad because they are afraid that they will be deported and they commit a mistake. We tend to talk about the glorious past, more about the future, but nothing about the present-day problems. Difference in the concept and handling of time in Germany and India makes the Germans always to differentiate between work and time, work time, leisure time, and Indians always don't differentiate. I told you that. So what is happening is India. We talk about the Great past, we glorify the past. We talk about the great future which is coming, but we don't care to talk about the present problems. So don't tell me that Bhagwan Ram came back from Sri Lanka with Sita Sita Vimana. So we had air on those days. Tell me how is air functioning today? Since Indians don't mind working after office hours, which Germans will never do, they also have no problem to treat the working hours in the office as leisure time. Leisure time at home as office hours. Indians love and probably tell you, oh, "I am taking work home." Germans don't do it. If you are in US, you tell your boss, "I am taking work home." You won't get a promotion. You may use the job because he thinks you have been lazy at the workplace. You have not finished the job. That's why you are taking it home. Some more differences. Social mixing between a man and a woman in the Indian culture. Young men and women in India interact. Very often secretly, because parents always play the role of watchdogs. In Germany, social mixing between a man and a woman who are not married to each other is absolutely no problem. 
young boys and girls can interact with each other they can choose their own life partners when it comes to status of women in indian culture this we have to accept that's a fact even today women do not share the equal status with men so the concept of woman as shakti and the concept of equality of man and woman as dipeshwar this reality indian men don't know it's not they don't know they don't treat in the women properly paradoxically the man will go to a temple he is a devi upasak he will worship the god as there durga lakshmi kali all that but then come home and beat up his wife in germany women are treated as equal to men it's very normal that the wife and husband share all the household work and also share the burden of taking care of children you will find many men in leading positions and men have no problems working under them indians are status conscious it's a horrible status consciousness we have the concept of social status is strong in every walk of life in india for example the so called educated indians will not like to do jobs which they consider is beneath their dignity go to any middle class family who are financially well off maybe they have all the luxuries and go to the indian families who belong to the so called upper caste go and see their bathroom they will have happy they will have lies all but the bathroom will not because they think it is their their dignity to wash the clay no in the you know, we saw of a washing stop and he said let me fix it they said no sir this is not your job the general manager called the deputy general manager he called the manager manager called the deputy manager deputy manager called the assistant manager a system manager called the foreman foreman called a laborer a worker and the worker called the daily laborer and the daily laborer fixed a problem and the german never understood why to fix a small problem which any of the engineers could have done why did they need 12 people to discuss in germany there is dignity of labor it's completely normal to work as a waiter in a restaurant while you are doing your phd indian kids cannot do it social status you know they will prefer to take all the money from the parents so they may not want to listen to them even the parents want to help the children to go and do a part time job and learn what is self respect and self dignity when it comes to business activities and business collaboration to indians relationship building is important first establish a friendly relationship and then build up the business germans when they want to do business they don't care about building up a personal relationship and there's a big problem because of that germans find the traffic on the indian roads as chaotic they are shocked to see that on the roads trucks buses steam rollers tractors cars motor rickshaws cycles people bullock carts cows buffaloes sheep and stray dogs if i missed out something you added negotiate their way with little apparent concern for rules of the road india absolutely impressed in a positive manner when they go to germany for the first when they see what's happening on the roads traffic flows in an orderly manner people seldom use the horn people drive in polished then they observe well marked lanes stop at stop light and wait for oncoming traffic to pass through road van when germans visit india for the first time they are overwhelmed by a sensory overload people everywhere vivid colors temples movies music blaring from all religious places calling you to prayer smells perfumes incense foods cow and human excrement for many germans first impression of india has to do with dirt rotting garbage on the road side plastic bags brick in shops open festering sewers excrement on the road etc etc and dust everywhere germans don't know that more than any indian culture more than any other culture germans don't know this indian culture is based on a deep belief in purity and pollution with touch every area of life india may have a reputation for a lot of public dirt and public filth but indians are obsessive about personal cleanliness life boy ekkada undo akkada aarogyam undu on the contrary indians when they land in germany for the first time are absolutely impressed by the public cleanliness they see everywhere 
lawns are lawns are manicured buildings are freshly painted streets are clean and sewers are hidden underground germans like action they want to do something or other all the time they can't sit for hours together and do nothing the biggest problem for a german is there's no problem to handle indians can do nothing for hours together they are not interested in problems indians don't get restless about doing nothing the hyderabadi chalo bhai baith ke i see ch gappe marenge is something a german can never do chalo aaj apan log bahut gappe mar liye topic ke bare mein so let me conclude my talk with the following remarks will you give me some more minutes learning a foreign language from a cultural cross cultural perspective is important for a cross cultural interaction we are not learned english from a cross cultural perspective we are learned english the way the english people learn it may cross cultural communicative competence means acquainting acquiring the appropriate knowledge about other cultures and also acquiring the necessary skills to successfully interact with people from other cultures in this context learning and using a foreign language does not mean just learning the lexical items and structures learning the grammar learning the idioms and collecting all kinds of information about the target culture it means one has to get in taken for granted meanings connotations of words and phrases and know the right context and know how to use a word or a sentence or a phrase where to use it with whom to use it where not to use it with whom not to use it and that is how one gains the cross cultural competence effectively then one has to compare and understand one what one has learned in the foreign language in its relationship to one's own language one's own culture in order to appreciate the other culture and be prepared to get into an intercultural dialogue unfortunately most of the you know indians today young indians they don't know their mother tongue indian languages are slowly dying and they are not that english because all the sms short messages are killing their english also right from the beginning a punjabi lady girl sent a message to me good g u d m r n g i called her ask kaun mar gaya ghar mein who died i said she said why i said you said m r n g morning no sir that is morning i said why good morning why not shakar morning my advice to all young people if you want to live in a cross cultural village cross cultural village called world if you want to be in a globalized world you want to work in a multi company learn proper english way of this nonsense with all abbreviations and short forms you that's fashionable that makes you american that is actually stupid because outside is a rat race you have to start running in the professional world if you want to run you have to start walking if you don't walk if you are limping all that time with such a horrible short form english when is your english going to improve the same thing applies to your german same thing applies to every foreign language you are learning depending on how one has equipped himself with appropriate cultural tools one would be able to synthesize both the cultures to become a meaningful and successful partner in intercultural encounter my last thought i'm concluding learning and using a foreign language means getting inside the other culture mentally even physically understanding the cultural context and connotations of the other culture whereby one knows about one's own culture first have a base in indian culture then only you can do cross cultural interaction then gaining and using cross cultural communicative competence then after successfully using the cross cultural communicative competence in that country get out of that other culture you don't become them get back to your culture and be proud of your culture it's a valid conversational currency give me three more minutes possible responses to cross cultural encounter there are four reactions possible this is what people are doing number one there are people who come to know another culture and after a very short time they start rejecting their own culture looking at their own culture as something negative they glorify and embrace the other culture the alien culture many young indians are doing this today you see in front of american consulate chennai a man standing for a visa young man his name is he is trying to become american 
His name is Krishna Murthy. Ask him what's his name? Krish. And he's hoping some American will have, girl will have a crush on him. It's not going to happen. Be proud of your culture. Your name is your culture. Don't shorten it. Clinton doesn't India and say, I'm boo. Why are you shortening your name? It starts there, your self-respect. So don't reject your culture. There's good things in every culture. Youngsters are doing this. It's a very, very dangerous thing. Just wearing jeans and talking American or German kind of language does not make you, you know, members of their culture. The second group are all these old Indians who go to visit their children abroad for six months. Their reaction is different. You can show them the other culture as long as you want, as intensive as you want. My culture is the best culture in the world. Indian culture, Bharatiya Sanskriti is the best. Everything else is nonsense. They have no morals. And so what they do is they reject the alien culture, exaggerate their own culture. That's why they'll go for six months, do great shopping, go on sightseeing, you know, see everything, come back. And you know what they'll do? Are, Germany mein kya raka hai? Kuch nahi hai. America mein kya raka hai? Kuch nahi hai. And who asked you to go? Don't go. Sit at home and enjoy. The third people, they are clever people. These are business people and diplomats. They know how to be like a pendulum in a clock to oscillate between two cultures. Are you a diplomat? He is posted in the Indian embassy in Nigeria. So next three years, Nigeria and India are great countries, great cultures, great relationship. After three years, he shifted to Korea. Of Nigeria, Badmajab. Korea is a great country. India is a great country, great relationship. He sent to America. Yes, America, India, great relationship, all that. Business people do same thing to do their business. The last one, these are really people with cross-cultural communicative competence. They have worked hard. They have learned a lot. These are people who feel at home at any culture, however long they are going to be there, and they never feel unhappy anywhere. And this is the kind of cross-cultural community competence each one of you should get before you indulge in a cross-cultural interaction which you want to be successful. If I want to see a global citizen like that, who has the cross-cultural communicative competence, who feels at home everywhere, you know what I do? I go and stand in front of the mirror and look at myself. If you want to page and look at my photo. Thank you all for your patient listening. If any questions, we can answer them now. If you have more questions, send them an email to me. My email address is German Ganeshan, all small, German Ganeshan, S H A, not the Tamil Ganeshan, German Ganeshan at gmail.com. You can go and look for me on the Facebook. Put my name, you'll find it. Put German Ganesh or Vidagiri Ganeshan. Look at the face so that you interact with the right guy, otherwise, I'll feel jealous, particularly if you're a lady. Students of Ganeshan, there's a group on Facebook. Go and see that group and join the group from all over the world, they have formed that group. Whenever you feel depressed, you feel a little dull, go to your Facebook page called Swami Dukkananda. You'll find spiritual messages, philosophical messages that may help you. If you want to see Swami Dukkananda, you need not do anything because Swami Dukkananda was talking to you right now. I wish each and every one of you what you wish for yourself. Please keep in touch and thank you very much. Vielen herzlichen Dank. Dr. Ganeshan, you have, I don't know why you call yourself Swami Dukhananda. Hasyanandam, Sukhanandam, and Anandam, that your name is, of course, I know why it is there, but, but uh, it has been an absolutely whirlwind of experiences, um, lightening them at moments where it could be serious. And of course, I have a chat box full of comments saying, ha, ha, ha. So um, we, will send you, we will send you these comments, yeah. but you will find half of them uh, enjoying and commenting um, to the wonderful uh, journey that you have taken with us. There are a lot of questions, in fact, and I'm just going to try to see how many we can fit in in the next 20, 25 minutes. Sure. The first one that I found was, and this is very interesting, 
uh, sir, in which culture would you like to be born in if you had the chance in the next Janma to decide? Well, uh, first of all, you understand your birth is not your choice at all. Right? Two people decide to create you, you are created. So wherever they are living, that's where you are born. So I can be born in India, but if my parents landed in Germany to go and work there, I may be born in Germany or I may be born in America. But what is important for me is not where I am born. What is important for me is how I am brought up by my parents. That's more important. And how do they make me into a very creative, multiple personality? And that's what's important. See, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, if you think of COVID now, you have to wear a mask, you have to wear it. And if you are a great follower of Sanatana Hindu Dharma and Vishwa Hindu Parishad, then only one thing. Be happy that all your Hindu gods and goddesses made arrangements that you are born in your this birth, is Janam Me. You are born the way you are with only two hands and two legs. Suppose you are born, born as Ravana, you will have to wear 10 masks and wash 20 hands every day. So just be happy wherever you are born. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I actually do appreciate your last uh, points that you made, the last four points. It is very essential that one is satisfied and content and grounded in the environment that one is so that when you take on another culture, you do not shake and, and get swayed uh, by the new culture because yes, you espouse this, but you also have to have the discerning capabilities to be able to take what you want and not necessarily everything that is offered. There is another question that um, has been asked, Padma in fact is asking this, what is the absolute taboo in Germany? What would be considered complete taboo in the German context? Absolute taboo. Absolute taboo would be, if you ask me, in the social interaction, interfering in the other's life unnecessarily, offering free advice. Hmm. That I think a German will be very, very sensitive about it. You cannot do that to a German because he will consult whom he wants. He will take advice from whomever he wants. See, in India, we are not like that. You know that. In India, we always give free advice. And free advice you give you in India from people who don't know anything about it. You know? And in spite of that, I tell you one thing. India, may, you know, who is the most honest person? I'll tell you, since Padma was asking this question, Padma is not you. It is not Amita. It's not me. It's not even Narendra Modi. Sabse nek admi hai India mein aapka paan wala. Wo ekhi, wo ekhi admi hai jo aapko bolke, poochke, chuna lagata hai. So, Germans are very sensitive to their private sphere. And that's very, very important. And of course, uh, cleanliness in public. That's very important. You know, they are, they are absolutely clean. And so if you are trying to make it a little dirty, they will react very, very aggressive. That's what I would say. Mm. Right, right, correct. Um, how has how have the cultural changes been uh, noticed? How has it been in the last five years or ten years in terms of the taboos or the cultural uh, understandings or misunderstandings? How has this changed? The world has been. I mean, it has become smaller. Uh, we know other cultures through other medium. So has there been a change, say, from what Germany understood of India or India understood of Germany in the 70s, 90s, and now in the 20s? Yes, things have been constantly changing. That is true. Uh, one thing you can see is the younger generation is more open today. The younger generation is more open to see other cultures, try to understand them, try to build up a kind of cultural bridge. But you can't blame the old generation for that because the old generation had no opportunities to travel. The old generation stayed where they were and they had their own problems, starting with the First World War, Second World War, rebuilding Germany. So what happened is, you know, Germany is a country compared to other countries. 
Germany never went and colonized any countries except some small place in East Africa. That was also for a very less time. And by the time Germans said, let us also do something, the world was already divided. The cake was gone. So they got only the four. So Germans by nature are very, very self-conscious and self-closed uh, kind of. Because they never had so many foreigners that way. If you look at England, if you look at America, if you look at even Africa, you know, you know, all these Indians going there and all that. And you know, interestingly, many of the Gujaratis who are in the US today, they came from Africa, not from India, actually, you know, and there are reasons for that. So for them, it's very difficult to come out of the shell and talk to people and all. This is like the difference between your grandfather and you. See, the grandfather had a limited world. So any foreigner who walked in, it was stranger for him. Whereas for you, today in a globalized world, you are working for IT company and all, mixing with other people is a normal day-to-day -day life. So obviously you open up. You know, even though I would say there are some things where not much has changed. I just want to give you a funny example. Your great, your grandfather's father was illiterate. Unpar. So how did he sign? How did he have to put his name somewhere to sign? He used to put the Anguta. Your grandfather learned how to write his name nicely in the language. No cursive writing. That was his signature. Your father learned beautiful, stylish cursive writing. Signature, Nietzsche, do dot laga. Now, what are you doing today? Particularly IT fellows. Listen to me. How are you signing? You are doing the same damn Anguta chop, but you call it with a nice name. You know? You are giving it a nice name. You know, you know what the name is, right? So you feel happy you're doing something modern. So some things change, some things don't change, but generally I do think, I do think uh, things are changing slowly, but slowly for good. But this is mostly the minority which is taking part in this change. The majority has to still learn. Thank you. Thank you, Ganeshanji. There's another question, and unfortunately, uh, a lot of people have not signed in in their own names. For some reason, they all uh, appear as Satya Pass. So I do not know who has raised this question. But the question is, Ganeshanji, is the gender equality of applicable also for working women uh, with respect to salary and, and, and promotion opportunities in, in, Germany, Germany. in Germany? In Germany. In Germany. In Germany. in Germany, I tell you, I will not say that they have solved all the problems. That's not true. They still have problems. I'm not saying no. But they have started looking into the problems. They are trying to solve it. That is something I'm afraid whether it's happening in India. See, whenever I make comparisons, please understand one thing. I'm not passing value judgment on any culture. I'm just stating the facts. I'm trying to provoke you so that you can think on your own. If you ask me, I will never say, oh, German culture is a great culture, Indian culture, Faltu. No, no. And I will also not say Indian culture is great and German culture is Faltu. I'll give you a small example. Germans are very surprised that Indians can go and take bath in any dirty water, Ganges water. Okay? And they say, how can you take bath in a Ganges water which is dirty? So for them, this is a dirty thing you're doing. But from the Indian point of view, what counts for you as a Hindu is you're not cleaning your body, you're cleaning your inner soul by washing yourself in the Ganges water. So the water can be polluted as per the chemical lab you know, results. But your inner belief that that water is cleaning you, that is your cleanliness. This they have to understand. You see, after all, in the church, when they have water for baptizing, they don't chemically analyze it. You know, you don't talk about that. Second thing is, from an Indian point of view, see a German comes to India. I'll tell you what disturbs most of the Indians is a German will use the same tissue, tempo tushan to 10 times, blowing his nose and push it back in his coat packet. packet. For him, it's clean. He's cleaning his nose. He's not thinking how dirty the tissue has become. That is irreducible. So any culture, we are trying to solve problems but different grades of that. That is right. I agree. So I'll give you one example. We still teach children to share our food. In many foreign countries, they are teaching them not to share their food. 
I initially, when I saw it in the US, I thought it was inhuman. No, there's a functional reason because there are hundreds of allergies children have there. So if your child shares the food with the other child, that child has got a peanut allergy, your food has peanut, the child falls sick, school will get into legal problems, teacher will get into legal problems. At that moment, they have to decide this is the way they have to solve it. So understand problems are everywhere. Some cultures are attacking some problems somewhere they think is happening in the world. Thank you. Yeah. Right, right. Thank you. Um, Hari is asking the teacher, uh, German teacher here at school, how can we achieve cultural exchange between India and Germany? So how does one actually become uh, you know, conversant with the differences and 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 uh, participate in the change. Okay, since uh, Hari was asked this question, is teaching German. First thing I'll tell you, Hari, is learn your German correctly. Don't teach wrong German. Make sure of it. Second, whatever German you're teaching, teach it from a cross-cultural point of view. So when you teach the children a word cold, don't just tell them cold is cult. No. That way, no cross will happen. You must tell them, if you are sitting in Hyderabad, you say it's cold, it is outside 15 degrees. If you are sitting in Kerala, it is outside 20 degrees. If you are in Delhi, it is outside 0 degrees, you know, or 5 degrees. In Berlin, it is 0. Moscow, it is minus 20. Tell them how relative each word has to be understood, phrase has to be understood. Tell them some information about German culture, but give it not in a negative manner, give it in a neutral way. and any cross-cultural exchange starts with individuals, not with government, not with organizations. Organizations will do what the people would like to do. So start your conversation. Now, I don't know if you're teaching in Hyderabad. Do you have this habit that since you're in Hyderabad, as a very, very committed and uh, seriously motivated German teacher, do you go over the weekend, do this, go to Salajan Museum, stand outside, Go to Charmina, stand outside. Go to Golconda Fort, stand outside. You'll always find some German tourists. Start talking to them. That is where the cultural exchange starts. If each one of us will do it, explain to them Hyderabad in German, since you can do it, so that they don't get any misunderstandings. Explain to them. Then you see what happens. It is something like a snowballing effect. Individuals will have to start. And this is very, very important. See, when somebody went to Ramana Maharishi in Tiruvannamalai and said, the whole world is not okay, a lot of things, wrong things are happening, and you are a, you know, holy man, you can tell people to improve change, but you're not doing, you're sitting in some corner in Tiruvannamalai doing nothing. Ramana Maharishi told him, my dear fellow, I have not created the world. You have not created the world. God has created the world. He is looking at it. He knows what to do. But what you do is, you don't try to change the world, you try to change yourself. If every one of us will change, the whole world will change. So if you want to do something about the cultural exchange, start with yourself. Even try to find a pen friend, what is called today the email friend in Germany. Don't worry what your wife says, it's all right. Let her find an email friend in Germany also. Right? Start exchanging your ideas. Talk to them. Talk to every German who meet here. If you don't understand something of Germany, ask them questions. And that is how we try to learn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ji. There's another question here which says, are there any generic prejudices? This has probably come from Jyoti Biswara. Are there any generic prejudices about Indians in Germany which will shock an Indian to know that this is how they think and they say, oh my God, we're not like that. So is there a prejudice, a thought that a German has vis-a-vis -vis an Indian? Well, one thing, we are very fortunate as Indians. Germany always had a positive impression of Indians, right from the beginning. Okay. I would say there is absolutely no negative approach to Indians per se. But if you are a stupid Indian, you don't behave properly, obviously people will not like you. You know, but Indians as an ethnicity, as a race, Germans have no negative feelings about that. 
also about your color. You see, they may have problems with the black color. That's historical. But brown color, they find it's beautiful. See, first time I went to Germany, 19 years old, I went to the barber for my haircut. He refused to charge me any money, saying my hair is very, very beautiful. It's nice, soft. I never knew in India, nobody told me my hair is beautiful. You see, they respect Indians. They respect that Indians are normally educated, they are cultured, and they also respect the fact that Indians are no troublemakers. See, that's one thing good about Indian. Indians are never a troublemaker as a community in any country. You never hear complaints about Indians. Because Indians always either try to adjust or they will try to ignore the local population, live their own life. So they are nowhere in the land. So you need not be afraid of going to school. So this problem of, you know, that you are being different color doesn't play a role. I can tell you one thing. I was once in Bremen with my teachers. We went on a German trip. Evening, we were walking around. One boy was sitting, that Bremer Stadt music content, you know that statue? A little boy was sitting with his mother. It was summer. He saw for the first time, this was in 1968, he saw for the first time maybe some foreigners like us. You know, we are a group of foreigners. Then he looked at me and told his mother loudly, Mama, cook mal, ein Schwarzer. In his perception, he said, Mama, look, there is a black guy. My teacher got worried. He sat in holy man. I told him, wait, wait a second. I smiled. I went to him. I smiled at him and said, Ach, weißt du, ich bin nicht schwarz. Ich bin braun. Verstehst du? And I said, aber weißt du, it was, the uncle is nicht schwarz. He said, actually, I'm schwarz a uncle. I must take that. So I said, the uncle is nicht schwarz. The uncle is brown. And weißt du, manchmal, abends, is the uncle blau. Then I told the mother, you explain that to your child. I said, and I walked up. So as Indian, I don't think there's any genetic problem, no. We have more problem with dark colors in India. You would see the matrimonial advertisements. Every Indian wants only a you know, fair-skinned girl with a British complexion. Particularly, you look at South India. But all your goddesses in the temples are black. But you want a fair-skinned wife. Why? So this is called Atma Vichar. So it is start doing this because according to me, without Atma Vichar, there cannot be Atma Nirbhat. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, there are, I think, two more questions and we do have time. Professor Ji, if you will allow them. Sure, sure. I have no problem. I will ask both of them together so that you can uh, talk about it. And we will end with that. Um, one question that's being asked by Srivaram is, uh, and I think Vidya both have asked the same question, is within Europe, what are the differences vis-a-vis -vis Germany? What are the differences? Are there great differences in culture that they encounter with one another? Or are they not as great as we would have it between India and Germany? Okay. Sorry, and the second question is uh, the differences uh, uh, in food habits between India and Germany. Of course, these are very well known, but, but it has been raised, so I ask you, what yeah. are the cultural differences of, of Indians and Germans in oh. their food habits? Okay. Yes, please. See, the first question, I spoke only about Germany today. The problem for us is, from our perspective, we look at them as Europeans and we think all Europeans are same. That's not true. The same way, they look at all of us as Indians and they think we are all same, which is also not true. See, India is something like Europe. You know, Gujaratis are different than Punjabis, than Malayalis, than Bengalis. Each is their own culture. But there are links between these cultures. That's why we are holding together. See, I'll give you, if you are a Telugu person, you go to Gujarat for the first time, they offer you Puri with Srikant. That's a cultural shock for you. Because you can never imagine eating Puri with a Srikant. And if somebody comes from, let's say, North or any other state to Andhra, he sees that you are mixing a rasalu mango with your curd rice and eating, he will get the shock of his life. So, Germans do have different kinds of cross-cultural problems compared to French, compared to Spain, 
compared to Italian, Belgium, Denmark, Sweden. So we can't, as they say in German, you are einen kommt scheren, you can't treat all of them equally. No, that's not. So depending on which country people are going, I try to give them advice. They're going, yes, your problems are going to be slightly different. They're not like that. So we have to accept that. So there are differences. And depending on the countries where you are going, you'll have to find out what the differences are. See, I'll give you one small example, even a romantic way of telling something. I know English man will not move his upper lip, a gentleman, with all politeness, you can tell a lady, well, I love you. That's English we have saying. French, he will be very romantic in his action and words, and he will tell a lady, you know, kind of, you know, bending, bending his body a little, je t'aime, and pick up eye contact. That's his way of doing it. A German will look at you straight and say, ich liebe dich. Sounds like a military commando, but that's German way of saying it, you know. So everything is different. You must find out what do French think about Germans? What do Germans think about the Spaniards? But one big difference is all the European countries who colonized other countries in Asia and Africa, they have generally, numerically, more prejudices than a country like Germany, which seldom colonized anybody. That's one thing we have to register. Absolutely that, correct. The last um, one about food habits. Well, food is culture. Now what bothers me much is not the difference in the food, but what bothers me is this unreflected. You know, I'm a language guy. I choose my words also correctly. Sometimes I don't use it carefully. I don't want to also, because I want to provoke you. The blind imitation Indians do, borrowing certain European food habits, applying it to Indian food. Okay, now, whoever asked this question, maybe it was Vidya, I think. Second question, food habits. Now, my question to Vidya is very simple. Or is it Jyoti? I don't know. But whoever it is. Neither of the two. This was somebody else I couldn't identify. was another Satyapa. Okay, koi baat nahi. Satyapa. Okay. Mujhe umid hai, Satyapa ji Satya bol rahe So I'm asking you one thing. आप अपने समोसा कैसे खाते हो आप चटनी के साथ खाते हो टोमेटो के चटनी के साथ दैट इज वेयर द प्रॉब्लम स्टार्ट्स व्हाई शुड यू ईट इन इंडिया एवरी डैम थिंग विद टोमेटो केचप व्हाई यू हैव योर ओन टोमेटो चटनी पुदीना चटनी इमली का चटनी सो व्हाट आर यू डूइंग बाय इंपोजिंग ऑन योरसेल्फ इट्स अ सेल्फ इंपोजिंग आउटसाइड हैबिट्स ऑन योर फूड यू थिंक योर फूड बिकम्स इक्वल टू देयर फूड दैट्स अ इंफीरियरिटी कॉम्प्लेक्स you should never compare food you should never do that you know they make palm fritz with the aloo you know we have hundred ways of making aloo in india but look at the youth today what do they want to eat french fries unko bolo aloo ka tikka khao nahi no they think it's below their dignity this is where the problem starts my point is when you get into another culture try their food don't say no try it it will be different be ready for it try to see what is tasty for you and choose that and eat don't let yourself be forced to eat something which you don't like i'll give you an example see when a german comes to india you give him a masala dosa and you give him a uthappam or pesaret he will choose he will tell you ne also masala dosa das magi the andre sake does not make mine as agari he will tell you well, that's not my stuff but this i like he likes masala dosa i know why because there is kartoffel in it anything which has kartoffel in it is a good food for german that's his psychology right when you go there a german family invites you you know they will try to give you some typical german food and they will make zawar kraut for you now zawar kraut they do it with lot of affection they want to show you the german food bahut pyar se dete hain but zawar kraut is not tasty for every indian it's all if you know the work out you know what it is okay now what should you do you should not make all these virginal sounds which your children make when you force them to eat food ah never do that smile take a little bit of zawar kraut 
taste it. It's an international politeness, etiquette. Then, when the host says, name and seed of Maya, take some more, smile at her, show some other dish, and say, you say, I would prefer that. By that, you are indirectly sending a message. Well, sauerkraut is fine, but it's not very okay with me. I would prefer a cut of a That is the way we have to handle it. Then everybody is happy. But you know, very often people don't do this. You know, and there are also sometimes stupid situations. You know, like I'll tell you, like, like an Indian man, he went to a restaurant. He was not very hungry. He went to Italy. He ordered a pizza. So they brought the pizza. And then the lady asked him, shall I cut it into eight pieces or 12 pieces? You know what the Indian guy said? No, 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 not 12 pieces. No, no, cut only eight pieces. I'm not very angry, hungry. I can eat only eight pieces. I can't eat 12 pieces. These things also happen. Okay. So that's what I would say. Never be skeptical about any food. And don't keep on saying, oh, you know, look at these people. They're eating snakes. So what? Are they eating your snakes? Okay. After all, Gujaratis also, when they talk to you in English, they tell you, let us have some snakes. You don't object to that. Right? So never make negative comments on somebody else's food. That is their food. You want it, take it. If you don't want it, politely say no. That's what is important. If somebody does not appreciate your food, that doesn't mean that he's an uncultured guy. No. Find out what he wants. Give it to him. That's what I would say. All said and done, Indian culture, Annadhanam is the most important dhanam. And you know, India is a country where education and food was never commercialized, never sold. Today it is happening. You have dharmashalas everywhere. You got free food. Only Sardarjis are doing it. Sikhs are doing it in the Gurudwara today. Even temples collect money from you for food. It's a shame. Education was also like that. You went to your guru, learned something, at the end, you gave him whatever he could. You, you could give him. Patram, Pushpam, Palam, Toyam. That's what even God says in Bhagavad Gita. But what are you doing today? Three lakhs advanced peace varna. Exam peace varna. So these are all taken from them. Of course, some things are forced on us. You can think about it, maybe. So I would even say as a teacher, if you're earning somewhere, some money, doing something, try to do something free also. Give your education free of cost to people who need it, who can't afford it. And that is good. Same thing with food also. You know, the whole concept of Bhavati Bhiksham Dehi. The Brahmin did not have material comforts. He wanted little food to eat. See, that's what I'm doing today. Whenever I go somewhere, people force me to eat a lot. I tell them, Dek baat sun lo. Ek zamana tha, jab hum kaane ke liye jite te, ab hum jine ke liye kaare. India has a wonderful food culture, wonderful habits, and I think we should make it available to them and learn their habits also. Stop eating your masal dosa with pork and knife. There's no logic in it. You know, eating has meaning. They eat with fork and knife because they're weak pieces or big chunks, they have to cut it. Chinese eat with chopsticks because they cut it into smaller pieces. The Indian food we eat with hand because it's life energy. We want to touch it. We want a direct touch. And therefore, India, if food is hot, the moment you touch it, you know it's hot. There, you take it in the spoon, put it in your mouth, then you start saying, Ayo, it's hot. These are all cultural differences. Okay? Good and appetite. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ganeshanji. I do have one question, if you will allow me, and we will sure. wrap up with that. Um, this is a question that I'd like to raise. Um, considering that you have uh, experienced Germany from early, no, mid-60s, mm -hmm. mid-16 onwards, mm -hmm. so you do have a history of about 50 to 60 years. Mm -hmm. Soon after the, war, the, 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 the wars, actually, rebuilding Germany was happening, the wall has come down. How has the culture within the country how has the culture of course generations changed times have changed mm -hmm. but from your experience the german culture as we knew it in the 60s and 70s versus the german culture as we know it now at this moment um, uh, well into the new millennia what would be your comments regarding this yes i'll tell you briefly it's a long question 
But no, 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 no. I'll, 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 I'll give you an answer. See, the first thing is, I'm also proud of one thing. Most probably, I'm one of the very, very few Indians who went to study in West Germany when I was 19 years old. I lived eight years. Then I came back. And then at my department at the Central Institute of English and Foreign Languages, I also had colleagues from East Germany. I interacted actively with East Germany also. And during my West German days, I used to listen to the perspective of West Germans about East Germany. Then from 1975 till 1990, I had the privilege of visiting East Germany every year, talk to them, their perception of West Germany. Then I saw the unification and what happened after the unification. Let me also modestly tell you one thing. I was selected for an international prize by East Germany called Jakob Wilhelm Grimm. The day are day under different, you know, framework, and I was selected in the year 1990. I had to receive the award in November, 10,000 marks, and a beautiful document. Everything was booked. My flight to East Berlin, Minister of Higher Education had to give it to me. But reunification came. Nothing happened. I still have the letter with me. That letter helped me to get my green card in the U.S. I'm waiting for a socialist state to come up on German soil anytime. I'll go with the letter and tell them, give me my 10,000 marks. I don't want the document anymore. But you're right. I've been, you know, this, I'll use a term which was used in the Hitler's Germany in a positive sense. Hitler's Germany, there was a action, you know, one who observes the folk. That's what I've been. In the 60s, 70s, even up to 80s, one could talk of the German culture, which was based on the German tradition, German culture. We could talk about it. And just give me a few more minutes. First time I went to opera in Germany, in Munich. I didn't know what it was. I was excited. I went there. My teacher said, take this booklet at the entrance. I said, okay. I said, what? what? He said, you have to read it. Otherwise, you won't understand what's happening on the stage. I said, why? I know my German, I said. It was the first three months. I felt very insulted that he said, I won't understand. I went and sat inside. Everybody was holding the book. It was a Mozart's opera being played in German. You see, first intercultural experience of culture for me, Mozart, opera, in German. Okay. The screen opened. It was dark. There was a big group of musicians sitting down there. One fellow, I'm telling you exactly what I felt that day. You know, today it's something else. I saw one guy standing up with a cane in a stick in his hand and he started threatening all the musicians to play properly. You know, he raised his stick, showed some fellow here, some fellow there and as if he was telling, and they all started playing music. I found it amusing. We were in a Carnatic concert in India. The singer and the instrumentalist, they don't give any directions to anybody. They all harmonize with each other. No instructions are given. But this fellow was telling somebody to play loud, somebody, you know, all that. Okay, funny. Screen opens. Dark light. Slowly light comes up. There's one lady standing there. Then she started singing. You know? And then she said, Woe bis do! First, I said, what is this? Ah, I said, woe bis do. I said, okay, I understood it. I was so happy. I understood it. But five minutes, she went on singing the same sentence. Woe bis do! Woe bis do! Oh, this too. All in. I was telling myself, what nonsense, what culture is it? Why is she repeating the same thing? I want to tell the lady, hey, I have understood it. Move on. Tell me the next sentence. Nothing happened. After five minutes, one fellow stood up at the back. Here, he said. She didn't turn around. He went on repeating that here, Binik. She said, oh, this too. Here, my old brother, oh, let go. 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 Oh, let You know, culture is not easy. But, the culture I realize, museums, concerts, you know, anything you, even the Oktoberfest, Bavarian culture, it was Bavarian culture. But after the 80s, slowly things have changed. If you look at today, the German culture, I would say the German culture is doing the same thing what the Anglicized Indian culture is trying to do, adjust to the American concept of culture. Germany is getting Americanized because of the globalization. It is happening now. It's happening now. And very often, a lot of modern things are coming up now. And see, say something like Brecht's alienation theory. 
you know, Brecht brought a new theory, it's a great theory for Germans. For Indians, it's not, but nobody talks about it. If you go to village drama in India, what do you call alienation effect? The actor should not identify himself with the role. He should make people think that he's playing a role, so they start critically thinking. What happens in the village drama? Go to any part of India. Ramayan. The fellow who is playing Raman, he will come out in between and smoke a BD with the audience. That is alienation effect. We don't need breath for that. Yes, they needed him. That's fine. So a lot of things like that. So today's German culture, I would say if you look at it from a conservative, traditional, maybe Puritan way of looking at it, it's uh, no more uh, the, the genuine, real German culture which Germany built up. It is now being influenced by other cultures. Influence from other cultures is not bad as long as your own culture doesn't get corrupted. And that is what bothers me. You know, it is like singing a rap song, some Tyagaraja Kriti, you sing a rap song and you think you are doing great service to Carnatic music. I don't think you are. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Ganeshan. I do see, and Jyoti Biswara has pointed out two or three questions that we have missed. One or two I see in the chat box, but we have overshot. And as uh, Dr. Ganeshan has offered, there is the email ID that's been posted on the chat as well. Please do write to him. As you know, he is always, always willing to share his knowledge, to interact with you. He is a great communicator. That's exactly what he did in the title uh, that he has uh, talked about, the intercultural communication and interaction, which he will continue to do um, on, the, on the email or on his Facebook. Thank you so much, Ganesh and Garu. You have um, always uh, come forward, talk to our students, talk to our teachers, talk to our uh, audiences. It has been a pleasure having you here. Um, you have regaled us with some fun stuff. Um, some very deep stuff, uh, which we all need to introspect and think about in the context of our own culture and our transposing ourselves in another culture, uh, blindly or otherwise and discerningly. Uh, great, great talk. Let Thank me, you so much. We look forward to having you. My style of rhetoric is absolutely Indian tradition. I've done a lot of rhetoric, German style, American style, all that. My style of rhetoric is like the Ayurveda, where they give you the bitter medicine mixed with honey. That's a role of humor <laughs> in my talk. However humorous it may sound, it is a very, very serious thing. Please think about it. Yes. Thank you. That's correct. That's correct. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Ji. Thank you. And thank you all for logging in. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and we look forward to having you on more such uh, online events. Thank you so much and goodbye and a good evening to all.